Just days after his release, Zimbabwean Pastor Evan Mawarire touched down in South Africa. Pastor Mawarire was arrested last week after he was accused of inciting violence and trying to overthrow the government. He was released a few hours after his arrest and charges against him were overthrown. Mawarire, who started the popular hashtag this flag internet campaign in April, is the organizer of one day na rather nationwide strike that saw the closure of shops, schools and some government departments. A recent series of demonstrations, the largest in years, have been driven by an economic crisis in Zimbabwe that has left banks short of cash and the government struggling to pay its workers. Now, organizer of the hashtag This Flag protest movement in Zimbabwe, Pastor Evan Mawarira, joins me in studio tonight. Thank you very much for taking time to join us tonight. Thank you so much for having me, Nandi. And let me also say happy Nelson Mandela Day to yourself and all South Africans today. Well, thank you very much. Now, it's uh, quite an honor to have you in, uh, in studio and very ironic that it's Mandela Day, a movement for democracy, a movement for freedom. Um, what have you done to celebrate this uh, wonderful uh, movement or day? I think for me, today has actually been a momentous occasion. I spent the day in Johannesburg, yes, doing interviews with media, but I took time to actually go on the streets. And uh, we went and visited uh, some Zimbabweans that are living in very difficult conditions uh, right here in South Africa, some on the street. And we spent time praying together about our nation, Zimbabwe, praying about their own lives here in South Africa. So for me, I think that was a very fitting thing to do uh, because we wish that our country would come right again and our countrymen would find uh, pride in one day returning to their own homeland and building it. Mm. Now, would you say after having been arrested not so long ago and uh, charged for treason and having charges dropped, would you say that you're running away? Uh, absolutely not. Um, this was a scheduled visit. I travel to South Africa often uh, and to other parts of the world. Uh, often those who know me know that I travel. Uh, there is nothing to run away from because I have not committed a crime. The courts proved that on Wednesday when I was released. Uh, and so for me, there is nothing to run away from. I'll be heading back home. My family is there and my work is there. Uh, and so Zimbabwe is home for me and that's where I'll continue to base until further notice. Mm. Now, what are the future plans for hashtag this flag movement? I think the future plans for the movement are found in the seeds of the movement. And the seeds of the movement was, were to create citizens that are bolder. In Zimbabwe over the years, we have been afraid to speak as a citizen for various reasons, uh, amongst them being the intimidation uh, over the years and, of course, the brutality that we have experienced uh, when people have spoken out. So going forward, our goal remains emboldening citizens. We, we cannot back down from this space ever again. And our goal now is to grow further and further into becoming citizens that speak more and more. But looking ahead, we have elections coming up in 2018. And if Zimbabweans are not happy with the current government that they have, then it's time for every Zimbabwean to start making preparations to change that within the confines of the law and constitutionally. Now, you've made such a huge movement. I mean, it's, it, it's affected the whole of Zimbabwe. And you're speaking of elections. Is there any plans to make your own political party? You know, I have been very effective as a pastor uh, and also as a, as a citizen. And I think that this needs to play out as much as it can. Uh, and I think sometimes trying to get into politics or trying to form it into a political movement may actually kill the impact that it has. I think Zimbabweans are waking up now to the fact that they will be able to make a choice and that they will be able to galvanize around the choice that they want uh, for themselves in 2018. Mm. And now you've managed to shut down Zimbabwe. Uh, where to from here? I mean, it's been shops, it's been schools, it's been education. This is the biggest shutdown ever mm -hmm. we've seen in a very long time for Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Where to from here? Well, you know, we, we, you know, we have a number of options uh, because what we are doing here is we are trying to get our government to realize that the citizens have needs that the reality on the ground is not something that we are just dreaming up, but it is, it is a hard life. And so part of our goal with the citizenry is to get government either to a negotiating table or just for them to change things the way that we are asking them to change things. We have not required of them to uh, you know, you know, move mountains. We've just said, do not put austerity measures when we are under crisis. Instead, why don't you put in place stimulus packages? Why don't you put in place stimulus uh, you know, policies? So for example, giving us uh, import licenses for basic commodities is not going to help because we have 85% unemployment. And the people that 
that have been importing these goods from uh, South Africa and other countries, it's a job for them. They've created their own jobs where government has failed. Government promised us 2.2 million jobs. We have lost, in fact, uh, hundreds of thousands jobs, uh, of jobs since then. They promised us investment. We have not seen any investment. Companies and businesses have shut down continuously since then. So these are demands we are laying to government, saying, respond to your citizenry. Even if you couldn't respond fully, at least inspire the citizenry. At least reassure them. At least come out and show that you are for us. And unfortunately, our government has reacted by uh, intimidating, has reacted by arresting, and has uh, you know, uh, reacted by, by, by being uh, heavy-handed on the citizenry, which is not the response that we're looking for. And it makes anti-government sentiment stronger. Mm. Now, um, there are allegations that you are a government spy or agent being used by President Mugabe uh, uh, as regime to divide opposition vote. How true is that? Well, I think first and foremost, because I'm not going into politics, I'm not dividing any vote. The second thing that is important for people to understand is that Zimbabweans are people that now understand the way in which our government uh, or maybe the ruling party operates. And this is one of those tactics of being able to confuse people so that they don't focus on the issues. We are in a situation right now where this, the issues can no longer be hidden. We live them every day. Every Zimbabwean is living out the toughness of life. No access to your own cash. No access to basic health services. Where in some of our major hospitals, women who are pregnant have to bring their own 20 liters of water to give birth. That's deplorable in a nation like Zimbabwe that has 36 years of independence. So no matter which way this is spun in terms of the conspiracy theories, the fact is that there are issues on the ground that need to be attended to. So whether I am a spy of the government or not, or as the government then says that I am a spy of the West or not, the fact is that there are issues on the ground that our government needs to urgently, urgently attend to. Now, this is a very pertinent question. Do you ever honestly fear for your life, seeing the position that you are in at the moment, for the mere fact that you're charged for treason? Does that ever cross your mind, and do you feel like your life is honestly in danger? Absolutely, Nandi. I, I would be lying to you if I said to you that I do not feel that my life is in danger. It is. The bottom line, though, is that I am just a citizen. I don't have a budget for a security, a complex security system. The one thing I've learned, though, is that my safety is within the citizenry. These are the people that keep me safe. These are the people that hide me or the people that stand with me and for me. And it should be like that for every citizen. We've got to stand for each other. So yes, there is that sense that my life is in danger. I have had a few brushes with shadowy figures that we don't know at this point uh, you know, who they are. But the Zimbabweans, I think, understand that at some point a price has to be paid for the freedom that we look for. Our parents went and fought a liberation war for a prosperous and peaceful Zimbabwe that we don't have. And so my generation has gotten to a point where we have said, if we now have to put our own lives at risk to get our country back for the opportunity to speak in and build our own country, then so be it, no matter what comes our way. Now, what Zimbabwe do you foresee in the future? What would you like Zimbabwe to be in the future? The Zimbabwe that I dream of is a Zimbabwe that is driven by ideas, ideas that can be challenged, ideas that can be grown, and ideas that can be implemented. The Zimbabwe that I see is a Zimbabwe that is, 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 does not intimidate its citizens, allows players, allows, allows its citizens to freely build their country. Uh, my children, uh, my little girls, those are the people I'm afraid of more. There are questions 20 years from now to say, Dad, why don't we have a bridge here? Why don't we have a hospital that works? And so that's the Zimbabwe I see, one that is built by the dreams of our children. I made this statement a couple of weeks ago, and I said, as Zimbabweans, we will no longer be divided by the politics of our country, but we will be united by the dreams of our children. And so a Zimbabwe that works, an economy that thrives, I want to see Zimbabweans in the diaspora come back home, flocking back home with the things that they have learned to build their own country. Now, you, you speak about politics and, um, you know, obviously you're not a politician, but 
seeing the current government today um, and the state that the country is in and the fact that there's uh, opposition like like the MDC and seeing the the recent announcement by Morgan, uh, Morgan Chang Rai's uh, health status where do you see your country politically moving forward because now you have an opposition party that has uh, 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 dreams the same dreams as Zimbabweans and they're trying mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. put Zimbabwe together but yet you have the current government that is in, in, is in shambles at the moment where do you see Zimbabwe going politically is there a possibility that uh, uh, Mugabe at some point will uh, step down everyone keeps talking about his health he's 92 years old and everyone's saying that yes we want him to step down but obviously there's a lot of resistance coming from there well you know at this point you know we don't people can but speculate whether uh, President Mugabe will step down or not um, I think the truth of the matter... Let me rephrase that. I think okay. the question I should be asking is, mm -hmm. will the elections on, be democratic at this point in time? Because it seems, as you said, a lot of Zimbabweans are sick and tired of the state that the nation is in at mm -hmm. the moment. Do you foresee a democratic Zimbabwe anytime soon? I think I'm forced to see a democratic Zimbabwe very soon. And again, like I said, because I am part of a generation that has been waiting for years for an opportunity to build their country. And we, we, we haven't gotten that opportunity. So I am forced to believe or forced to look forward to democratic elections, particularly with some of the processes that we have started now, which include movements like this flag that are holding the government to account. And there are many other movements, by the way. This flag is only a part of, of the puzzle. There are many other movements and efforts that are pushing uh, the government for reforms, especially electoral reforms. We would like to see those reforms take place. We would like to see people in the diaspora being able to vote. We would like to see those that are, are skilled and have equipment to monitor elections come and help us to monitor our elections properly. So I'm forced to see that. But I want to answer again going back in terms of do you see Zimbabwe going forward politically? How do you see it going forward? I have but one answer for this. We in Zimbabwe cannot continue to recycle the same ideas and the same people and expect different outcomes. This is a reality that we have to face, both in the ruling party and in the opposition party. We can't continue to recycle the same ideas and the same people and think we're going to get new results. There's a generation that's ready, a generation that could make the current set of politicians proud if they would allow this generation to step onto the scene and take Zimbabwe to a place where it should be. Now, you say that Zimbabwean party is recycling ideas and not coming up with something new. Um, from a, a Zimbabwean citizen's perspective, what would you say are the critical key points or areas that should be uh, changed or uh, uh, revolutionized? I think first and foremost, attitude towards citizenry is very important. Citizens have not been seen as people or as stakeholders. We've always been seen as voters or just as votes. And what that means is that we are only ever spoken to when it's election season. When it's not election season, no one is interested in us. That attitude has got to change. And I think that is a key thing for the political parties in Zimbabwe to start learning how to touch the citizenry, how to inspire, how to motivate, how to reassure. Because as people, we respond better to motivation than we do to intimidation or than we do to isolation. Now, there's been a lot of um, threats in the past, you know, uh, in Zimbabwean politics where people's lives have been threatened and people have been beaten up, etc. Um, do you think that tactic will still be used? It, 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 do Zimbabweans fear the, the, the current party? Yes, they are demonstrating, but your life is in danger. But the, the general Zimbabwean citizen, do they still fear that should they continue with this, they're going to be stopped as, for example, as media has media houses have been stopped. They can't report certain things. Just uh, not so long ago, uh, one of the media houses was rejected and they couldn't go into the country to report such mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Over the years, one of the things that has done us bad as Zimbabweans is, of course, the fear and the intimidation. This flag movement, along with other movements, we have focused on breaking fear. So you find one of our catchphrases in Shona, it says, Atichada Atichachka, which in, 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 in English is, we are fed up and not afraid. It's a message we have to keep saying because we have to now start coming out of that shell of being afraid. And 
I think it's a, it's, a, it's a battle that we are winning. When I look at what happened on Wednesday, I came out of court and couldn't believe my eyes and literally saw thousands of Zimbabweans that had gathered around the court well into the night waiting for the verdict and, 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 and demanding that I be released. That's unprecedented. People sang in the courthouse. They sang worship songs in the courthouse. They prayed in the courthouse waiting for the magistrate to come down and pass the verdict. So these are, are exciting times as Zimbabweans are scaling the wall of fear and getting to a place where they are saying, as we go forward, if the old tactics of beatings, of imprisonment, of disappearances are going to be used in our numbers, we want to say enough is enough. You can't take all of us. You can't beat all of us. You can't arrest all of us. And that's why it's important for us as Zimbabweans to unite as we are doing right now because our strength is in numbers. Now, you mentioned that you were in the courthouse and people were there to support you. What was going through your mind when you heard the charges that you've been charged with treason? I mean, that's a really, really big uh, charge there. What was going through your mind and, and your heart, honestly, thinking, were well, you going to go to jail? What's going to happen to my family? What were your first thoughts and what was your fear? You know, it was a, it, it was, it's a territory I have never anticipated I would be in in my life. I was completely um, caught unawares, completely unprepared. Um, as I was sitting in the back of the court waiting to come into the docks, the charge I knew that I was up for was inciting public violence, which again is a charge that you know, I denied and still deny to this day. Um, but when I got into the docks, I was then presented with this new charge, and my lawyer came to me and said, listen, this whole thing has changed.